नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम product here which is an operator but this outer product if you see this outer product if you see it is the outer product of the same state what is the property of a projection operator let me ask you this what is the property of a projection operator if you do it twice it will be the same any num any number of times you do it going to be same can we verify that here let's take p1 square what is p1 square p1 square is p1 is 5 1 5 1 okay you will also have a 5 1 5 1 but what is this we have taken a orthonormal basis so that's one so this is same as 5 1 5 that's the property of a projection operator i am not sometimes i don't put the hat but now from now on you should know whatever we are doing when i write an outer product it's an operator so this is the property of the projection operator what are its eigen values now you can give in the two dimensional vector space you can rewrite this as a 2 cross 2 matrix right So let's write. Suppose phi one is taken to be one zero, and phi two is taken to be zero one. What is phi one phi one? One zero zero zero. What are the eigen values of this? Zero and one. If if the state is in that subspace, it will get projected with the same. It will be as it is. If it is not in the subspace, it's going to be zero. So that you can also satisfy from here, p1 squared minus p1 can solve that equation. Can rewrite p1 squared minus p1 as p1 squared minus p1 equal to zero, which implies. P one is either giving zero or one as eigenvalues. Right. So this condition, when I write, this is the product of two operators. This condition, this will either tell me that P one is zero or P one is equal to one. That's all I'm saying. And it should also satisfy P one square equal to P one. But these constraints, these are the only possible. Okay, so that's the beauty of this projection operator, where this outer product phi one phi one is one zero zero zero, then the other product phi two phi two will be zero 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 one. So what is phi one phi two? Phi one phi two is not a projection operator. But it's still a two by two matrix. What is that two by two matrix? Someone can help me. One zero, which is a column multiplying zero one. Is that right? Similarly, what is phi two phi one? Zero zero one zero 
So what have I tried to do? I have tried to show that the four possibilities of outer product which I can write for the two bases, two dimensional vector space, they can be given, the outer product can be given a two cross two matrices with only one entry which is non-zero. Okay. So this appears like the one two element which is non-zero. This appears like the two one element which is non-zero. And the earlier ones were the diagonal elements 1 1 was non zero, right? 5 1 5 1. Phi 1 phi 1 is 1 0 0 0. And phi 2 phi 2 is 0 0 0 1. So this should kind of tell you something. Any 2 by 2 matrix which you write can be represented in terms of this Dirac notation where you will have 4 possible basis states with phi 1 and phi 2 in the 2 dimensional case. So, let me write that. So, if you take some operator A, you can rewrite a representation for this in this two dimensional vector space as some A11, A12, A21, A22. I can also rewrite this as A11, 5151 plus A12, 5152, 52. Plus A21, 5251, plus A22, 5252. This is also correct. Write this compactly as summation over I, J, which is 1 to 2, AIJ, phi I, phi J. So, just like we wrote a state psi as summation over i ci phi i, I can write any operator. This operator could be position operator, momentum operator, angular momentum operator, all possible. By operator, I mean anything which you see in the observable. So, they can be given an operator in quantum mechanics. And they can be defined just like phi i or the basis for the states, the outer product will be the basis for the operator. How many will be there in n dimensional vector space? n squared, n squared basis. And from here can we extract what is, let's say, what is A11. If you want to find what is A11, how will I go about it? So let's do that. So let's take phi 1 with A operator phi 1. If you do this, what do we get? This left hand side angular bracket, the bra, will only give non zero with which two terms? Only with the first term and the second term. Third term will be 0 by the orthonormal property, right? The phi 1, if I operate, phi 1, phi 2 is 0. Similarly, phi 1, phi 2 is 0. So, these two terms will be 0 by putting the bracket, bra, the bra vector phi 1, if I put on both sides, this is going to be 0, these two terms. If I put the ket phi 1 after that, that will operate on this ket and it will, what happens to this term? Phi 1 will be 0. So, what do we get from here? The only non-zero element will turn out to be A11. Okay. So, what have I tried to present here is that 
if you have an abstract operator and an abstract basis state, you can find the components of this abstract operator just like CI when I wanted to find CI was Phi I with Psi. So, you take the inner product of Phi I with Psi. In the context of operators, if you want to find these coefficients A i j, you have to take Phi I A operator Phi j. That is it. Any of the Hamiltonian operator they could write and so on. So, the operators also has a basis. The basis are these outer product of these basis vectors. So, that will be n squared basis and you can write any arbitrary operator as a linear combinations of these outer product vectors. So, suppose I give you that Hamiltonian is given to be epsilon 1 phi 1 phi 1 plus epsilon 2 phi 2 phi 2. Suppose I give you this. What does this mean? These two are like the projection operators. There are no cross terms. So, this will be the matrix representation for this can be written as a diagonal matrix with the off diagonal term being C. So, you need to be able to read given any operators in this notation what actually it means if you put it as a matrix operator, matrix representation. You will be able to read from there whether it is diagonal, whether it is off diagonal. But once you put it in this notation, finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors you already done right in your math course. Any 2 by 2 matrix, if I give you A, B, C, D, how do you find the eigenvalues? So, A minus lambda i determinant of that equal to 0, you can find the eigenvalues from that right. So, you it will give you lambda 1 and lambda 2 as eigenvalues, it is given by this matrix is A, A minus lambda i determinant of that, that has to be 0. Then you solve this and you find what is the two eigenvalues. And once you know the eigenvalues, you know how to find the eigenvectors. This is a compact Dirac notation for a diagonal operator. But whatever I write there for a finite dimensional vector space, you can try to rewrite it in matrices and you can work with what you know from your matrices. So, what are the eigenvalues of this operator? If I ask you, it is very trivial. Epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are the eigenvalues and the basis states are phi 1 and phi 2, which is 1, 0 and 0, 1. So, this can be a trick question asking you, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, there is nothing to work out. But if I give you an off diagonal matrix, you need to do a little bit work because once I have this off diagonal matrix, it is no longer, you have to find out what is the eigenvectors and the matrix. Okay. So, let me just try to, okay. So, this is what I went through just now that you have phi 1, phi 2 which is orthonormal basis and psi 1, psi 2 which is non orthogonal and you can do a Grant Smith orthogonalization and in the process you see a phi 1 phi 1 which is which is the nothing but this outer product is nothing but a projection operator projecting on to a subspace phi 1 and you subtract that out and then what you get is the state which can be the orthogonal basis to the phi 1. So, and this is what we call it as a projection operator. And in two dimension, we can write two projection operators whose sum is an identity operator. Okay. So, for an n dimensional vector space, you could write projection operators n of them 
and the sum of those projection operators will be turning out to be 1. If it is not 1, what does it mean? Suppose it is not 1, x here. So, you, you have not spanned the whole state and it's not, you have not found the complete set of basis state. Right? So, suppose you are in x, y, z and I give you only p1 and p2 and I say that there is only phi1 and phi2 and if it is not equal to 1, you know that it is not spanning the whole space. You have to have one more, then it is not a complete basis set. You have to give for a 3 dimensional R3, I have to give you I cap, J cap and K cap. If I just give you I cap and J cap, it is not complete. You all agree? So, this condition which we write, this condition that the sum of all the projection operators of a given basis set being identity is what is called as a completeness condition. Okay. This is the completeness condition and we need this without which we cannot work, we cannot make progress. A basis set, if I say it is a basis set, it has to satisfy this criterion. So, if I say ortho normal basis set, then phi i, phi i summation over i from 1 to n has to be an identity operator. This is a I call this by definition a basis set, then this has to be satisfied. This is called completeness condition and you have to also, once you say it's orthonormal basis, it understood that this is delta ij for all i comma j which is 1 to n. What else? Any arbitrary operator will be rewritable as comma j, some ai j coefficient, phi i phi j and any arbitrary state psi can be written as so this takes care basis set includes the span and the completeness condition and this right here. Is this clear? Playing around between Dirac notation and your familiar matrices in a 2 cross 2, 2 dimensional vector space and 2 cross 2 matrices. If you are clear about this, you can do any 3 cross 3, n cross n. What happens to functions of operators? Suppose I write an operator A as summation over i comma j, a i j phi i phi j. What happens to functions of operators? Suppose I want to do this. That's one question. And then you can extrapolate it to exponential of i a operator. What it is? A squared is repeating this. You can put two different indices and do this, right? A squared will be summation over mn, a mn, and then you will have a phi m, phi n, and then summation over ij, aij, phi i, phi j. And then what do you have to do? These are numbers. Phi n, phi i will be? What will that be? Summation over mn, ij, take it out, summations, take all the scalars out, and then what do we have? Phi m, then phi n, phi i, phi j. What is this? That's delta ni. 
so you will have summation over m n i j delta n i a m n sorry a m n a i j then phi m phi j so wherever n is there i can replace it by i and one summation of i is gone So this thing you can write it as a squared the m j element, right? So you can actually see that if this is a, then this becomes a function of a squared, function of that operator, this coefficient. So this is what you are trying to see. So you can try and do this for a general. So just to tell you what is Hermitian, what have you learnt about Hermitian operator in your first course? An operator operating on a psi of x, if it gives you a times psi of x, then you say a is a eigenvalue. For Hermitian operator, what is the requirement? This is an eigenvalue equation. A is the eigenvalue. If you want to call A to be A, the capital A operator to be a Hermitian operator, then A has to be real. When you do an expectation value of d by dx operator, what happens? You can show this to be imaginary. Have you tried this? In your particle in a box, please do this. Particle in a box, take the particle in the first excited state or a ground state or any state. Find what is expectation value of d by dx. Please do this. That's why d by dx is not a, it's giving me expectation values which are imaginary, which is not an observable quantity. So that's why we do this i d by dx. Of course, with dimensional things, you have a h cross also with a negative sign. This will be real. This, I'm sure you would have done it in one of the assignment problems. Expectation value of del by del x is imaginary. Have you done this or no? If you have not done it, please do it. It's not difficult. Please try and prove. Prove that, that the expectation value of the del by del x operator for a particle in a box. You try to do this, it is imaginary. Whereas, minus i h cross del by del x is going to be real. So, all, if you want to call an observable, the expectation value of the operator should be real. So, d by dx operator expectation value is not real, it is imaginary. So, for you the momentum operator is minus i h cross del by del x because that expectation value will be real. So, this is something which if you know, then we can go to this. I will do this on Wednesday after you come back from your break and then the hermeticity can be slightened. Okay. Let me stop here.